Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris and in this episode we will be talking about the switch statement. I'm assuming we will be done with this relatively fast, so I will probably throw in some information about logical operators at the end. Once we are done with this episode, we will have covered a lot of ground regarding control flow. I'm pretty sure you're fed up with it by now. So let's get this over with and we will be able to move on to a different topic. Let's talk about the switch statement first. What a switch allows us to do is checking a specific variable against different cases. This means that we can easily decide on an action depending on the current value of the variable. Let me demonstrate this concept with an easy example. We will take our trusty number one variable and assign the value 0 to it. And then we are executing a switch statement with this variable as our target. So here is how it looks. Now this should look familiar. A switch statement is preceded by the switch keyword. It then has a head where we put the variable in question. And again it has its own body. Now unlike the concepts we've learned before, we can't just go ahead and execute any statements. We need to test this variable first. So how do we do that? Earlier I talked about cases that we assume to be potentially true for this variable. The variable starts with the value 0. So let's write a case for that. Right now we have written a condition which evaluates to true when number 1 is indeed 0. We do this by using the case keyword and following it up with the value that we expect, in this case 0. This value then gets followed by a colon, right here. Now it is time to define the statements that we want to execute if this condition is met. So we could print out a message like this. We are not limited to a single statement. We can execute as many as we want. Now if I go ahead and run this program, we will get the following output. And as expected, we get our two lines. But now comes the interesting part. Imagine somebody uses our program to produce any integer and store it within number 1. But we only want something to happen in three specific cases. Namely when the value is 0, 5 or 10. This logic is simply added by doing this. If we now change the value of our variable to 5, this line right here should be executed. But as expected, this would be too easy. Well, it is true that our statement got executed, right here. But for some reason, the statement in the following case was also executed. Now why is that? Well, this happened because of the nature of a switch statement. Whenever it finds a case that matches the value of the variable in question, it executes all the statements down the line. So right here we got to case 5 and we executed this statement. And then it executed the following one, ignoring the condition behind it. If we had a fourth statement, like case 15, then the statements in there would have been executed as well. So how do we stop this from happening? Luckily there's an easy solution to this. Even though a switch statement is not a loop, we can still use the break keyword. So by adding it at the end of each case, we ensure that only those statements that we're interested in actually get executed. So if I were to run this program again, we would only get this line. Another nice feature of the switch statement is that we can handle all other cases that we didn't specify in one single statement. By using the default keyword, 
we can associate a set of statements for all other values. Now keep in mind that the default case is placed at the bottom of the switch statement and as such doesn't need to be stopped with a break because it is at the end of the statement chain already. So let's try assigning a value that isn't listed in the case statements. Now if I run this, we will get our default line. On one last note, if you wanted to execute the same set of commands for multiple cases, you could do this. Now if our value is either 5, 6 or 7, this line right here gets executed. And just for a quick test, everything works perfectly. So that's all that there is to switch statements. It's actually a pretty simple concept and it can prove useful in many cases, no pun intended. So let me wrap this up by talking about logical operators for a second. When it comes to Boolean expressions, logical operators allow us to be more specific with our request. What we did just now was testing a variable against multiple different cases. When it comes to evaluating the expression itself, we can achieve the same effect using a simple if statement. So let's move down here and say we have another variable called number 2. Now if we wanted to check this variable for different values at once, we could do this. This sign you see right here is called a pipe. And by using a double pipe like this, we use a logical operator OR. So we can read this line as follows. If number 2 equals 5, OR if number 2 equals 10, OR if number 2 equals 15, do this. So we keep in mind double pipe means OR. And if there's an OR, there must also be an AND, right? Correct. We also have the ability to place multiple constraints within an IF statement. And the sign for that would be a double ampersand, like this. Double ampersand means AND. So let's say we have another variable called number 3. and we assign the value 5 to it, then we could even combine the two and assemble our if statement like this. Now the if statement reads like this. If number 2 is 0 and number 3 is 5, print this line, or if number 2 is 15, print this line. You may have noticed that I put these two inside of parentheses. You can do that to break up your conditions into logical parts. And depending on your construct, it may even be necessary to make it explicit to the compiler how you want your expressions to be evaluated. Anyway, as it stands now, we've pretty much covered everything that there is to know about control flow. So in the next episode, we will finally move on to a new topic. This is it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll be glad to help you out. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. See you next time.